schedule for it. You must have a schedule for it, and you must do it repetitively. And I'll tell you that, and Taylor and I have talked about this, all I did is I called three days a week from 3.30, wait, no, from 4 to 5.30. I started doing it in the morning, but I, like all of you, I have five roles, right? Taylor might have some success, but um, I have five roles that I had to do in this company. So I was calling in the morning, but then I started calling later, and I found that I could catch more people. I got more experienced agents later in the day. And all I did was three days a week, and I used the scripts that we're going to run through tomorrow, the appointment setting script, and the, it, it, it like makes me crack up when I think about it, because all I did is I learned the language, the same language Jeff knows, the same language that Taylor knows, we just have to ever use it, and all I did was that. I just picked up the phone three times, and I was brand new in the market. I knew no one, not a soul. I, I swear to God, I had a free reminder. I had a three week binder with all the rosters in it. I didn't even have a real reference. I mean, it was existing, we just didn't do it. But I did have my admin put the production in. I took the script, I sat down, put some music on, stood up, I didn't sit down, I stood up, I started calling. And all the time we did it, we ended up being the number one, uh, uh, the number one company in uh, Essex County or the Tri County area, in the Boston area, and it's in the top 10, and moved into the top 10 in that area. And it was just phone calling, that's it. So there's nothing sexy or beautiful or you know, special about it. But here's the deal, and then I'll show you about it. When you're passionate about what you're selling, everyone can do it. And I knew exactly what I was doing, and I loved it there. I loved it. Okay. So now half the room doesn't want to pick up the phone and call. So Taylor, what do you got for us? Yeah. I got a fun stuff out of me. So the first one, uh, basically there's five things that, in my opinion, are the five key things that we do differently to um, recruit in the school way. So first of which, and so you have seen these before, but we actually just recorded two new ones, and I'm going to have Alana in the back play them for us. They're value proposition videos. And so, you know, anyone who's in our Michigan market, you probably would attest that if you're scrolling Facebook, you're seeing these videos a couple times. Um, so what we're doing is essentially creating these, and then part two, which we'll talk about afterwards, is actually how we get it in advance and generate leads as a result of it. So let's go on a little So value, we call them value proposition videos. And they're excellent. You do great. Can I just hear my voice? You sound good. Are you a real estate agent and are you concerned about how the NAR settlement will impact your business? Hi, I'm Taylor Kerrigan and I'm the sales director here at Glover Agency and I can tell you our agents are not concerned. When we look at our agents business, they are focused on skills and training, the two fundamentals that will help you succeed in this new market. At Glover Agency, we spend time every single day training our agents to be the absolute best salesperson, whether you're talking to a buyer or a seller. As a result, we're not concerned if we can show our value to the consumer. We know that we will get the income that we deserve. If you're interested in finding out about our skills and our training and our organization, reach out to gloveragency.com forward slash careers. Yeah, so we Yeah, so we purposely showed you this one because literally a lot of recorded this on her iPhone in the back of our studio. Like there is no fancy lights, it was just a ring light and a backdrop. And so we did this purposely so that we can see any of you can go home and execute the same exact thing. All she did was throw it in, you know, one of those video editors that we, you know, teach about in marketing mastery and you know added the stuff at the bottom and the background music. Otherwise this was completely, you know, DIY ourselves. Yeah. So the tactic and the takeaway from that would be, okay, since we know marketing 101, no one pays attention to your marketing until they know that there's a problem. You understand that? Your marketing is falling in deaf ears unless they know that there's a problem. So therefore, present a problem and be the solution. That's how marketing works. That's the most effective marketing technique there is. So we already know that there's a problem that exists that real estate agents think is going to be a problem. So where's your video addressing you? Go make one. Next. Um, so there's a second one. This one's a little bit fancier, but it's again. Are you a real cool? Are you a producing real estate agent and you want to do more with your database, but you have absolutely no idea where to start?
challenges that agents have is working their database, knowing what to do with their database. So it's, it's, it's grabbing onto an industry challenge and being the solution for it. Challenge meets solution. Yeah, so two thoughts on that. Um, so first, that one was created by Live With Real Media. So if you're thinking to yourself, how can I execute this? You need to hire them. I go to Adam and I say, this is my vision. Can you help? And this is what I need in return. So if you're looking for that, you need them. They're here. Yep, they're outside. Secondly, um, the reason why I picked this one to show you, and again, this was literally recorded last week Friday, was our opening day party. What you couldn't tell, it was so loud in the background, which is why I'm like screaming into the microphone. I should have realized that it was going to be fine, <laughs> regardless. But I picked this one because I wanted you to think to yourself, there's probably cool things to do. Do you force yourself to, self to capture every single moment? And I'll tell you, you know, Matt and I are having these conversations now all the time. I'm like, how can we better promote this? How can we better show what we're doing? How can we better, you know, get this word out to everyone in the market of this is the party that our agents get every single year for their clients? And so I purposely did this one because I want you to write in your notes and take a step back and think, are you truthfully documenting everything you do? Because people make decisions when, you know, when we talk about, um, you know, people make decisions on how you make them feel. Well, with real estate agents, I personally believe producing real estate agents make their decision on who they're going to align with, number one, on who you are, and number two, who they're going to become when they align with you. And so every single time that we're putting together videos, footage, social media posts, I the, the thing I am constantly thinking about in my messaging with that is how does this benefit them and how do they believe that they would grow by being affiliated with this? And if you can answer that question in your videos or whatever you know you're promoting, that's where you know our agent attraction is is great. Yeah. Now you know you said it earlier today where like people start knocking on your door yeah. and saying, hey, can I sit down with you? But that's happening in our organization right now, and it's happening with multi-million dollar producers. That's and that's because correct. Which question? Not calling. Yeah, she's like, yeah. she told me she's like, well, did you? I told her I'm like, hey, I just hired this like twenty-three million dollar producer. And she's like, cool. Did you prospect today? And I was like, did you hear what I said? <laughs> so there's a takeaway from that, and we covered it last year at Lead Up, and that is your value proposition is only as good at the rate at which you promote it. Okay, your value proposition is only as good as the rate at which you promote it. Totally. Catch them in the act of using your value prop. Catch them in the act or yep. agents using it. Catch them in the act and get the word out about it. Yep. Otherwise, you could have the best value proposition in the world and no one knows about it. It's not going to be any good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Kathy, let's go back to old school. God, I don't want to bore you. Right now, fancy video, even though I'm getting better at it. So here's a fundamental one. You know, Tracy, you've done a really good job of this. Aaron, so have you. Where's Anissa? You guys are all in the same row. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. She's done a great job of recruiting. Uh, Anissa's recruited a couple of um, experienced agents. New, new team, growing their team. Yep. Tracy's done the same thing. Uh, and Aaron has also done the same thing. And a piece of it is we've done the old-fashioned thing of picking up the phone. Another is the old-fashioned thing of we, what Jeff said is, what are the top five that you that you see working that are more traditional? It's the fundamental thing of calling pull out agents. It's so easy. But oh, hold on, what's different? What's different about that? That number one is number one is creating a hit list and calling and recruiting. Right. Calling co-op agents, you're referring to like thanking them for the deal, starting a relationship. Yeah. So Talk sorry, no, that's fair. Yep. And again. We're doing this conversation extended later. We'll get into implementation more when we do this later because we're, we're our time is break out today. Yeah, we have a breakout. Thank you. So yeah, so you know, you call the other agents during the transaction, frankly, and just thank them unless you know the other agent that works for you says, you know, uh, don't call them because they're a jerk. Yeah. And then you call them and now you're in trouble. So and again, for those of you that have been recruiting, it's a warm call. It's a warm call. Those of you that have been recruiting for a long time, this is as old as the day is long. Yeah, it's before me, yeah, right? Yeah. But here's the thing I know to be true, is that even though it's older, do you think maybe an agent that works for a large company that never, ever, their leaders never communicate with them, might think it's nice if Scott or Tracy give them a call? Yeah. See? Versus a little card that they sometimes send. Right. Or it's filled out by someone at the front that works in the front desk. Yeah. 
No, yeah, that's another thing with recruiting, right? When they do, what is it, slide dial or something, and you get the same message from everyone. I'm like, well, that's, yeah, that's really hard to know. The other thing, that the one thing that uh, Taylor and I have in common, and Jeff always did, is that we are, uh, we don't treat everyone the same, right? So you have to get to know the people because it's a relationship business that you're recruiting. So the simplest thing to do with a co-op is during, I, I don't say wait till after the transaction. Yeah, during the transaction, just pick up the phone, check in. And did I, did I say text them? No. No, I didn't, did I? It's so easy to text them. So do you have a phone? Yeah. No. <laughs> Okay, right. fine, if you're below my age. All right, time to school. I'll find that bell up here. Right. Sorry, right. New school. Okay. Um, back to the cool stuff. So the <laughs> second day, which by the way, I hired a producer that was a co-op, and I texted him. Yes. So, <laughs> so it works. Thank you. All right. Facebook and Instagram lead advertisements. So those videos that you just saw, you really should align with the company that can help you promote them on social media. So you know, digital marketing, um, I think Alana's throwing up the, the um, results of it. But I can tell you, when we talk about getting, um, uh, I'll tell you this is more so we do get more. Are, are you like? <laughs> from um, our videos, videos that are out there. Now I will able, tell you- We have a bank of videos running that are similar to those two, those two which just happened to be the most recent. Yeah, those are for those new agents are not licensed yet agents, so you need to know that. Um, but what's nice is you're producing, listen, it, Jeff has always told me this, it's being in the right place at the right time. And the reason why it works for producing agents is because they're seeing you know, my face or Jeff's face uh, consistently on their social media feeds. And so it's, you know, stuff then goes wrong at their current brokerage, and what do they see later that day on Facebook? They see my video. Yeah. So, it, a few bucks behind it. Correct. And by the way, and a lot of might know the answer to this, or you might know Taylor, I see the ad spend of basically call it three grand. Is that in a month? Is that in six months? Is that in three months? What's, that's a three month spend. Okay, so $1,000 a month. Got it. Got it. All right. All right, go back Kathy, to the board. You're on this. <laughs> We're rapid okay. fires. It's good stuff. <laughs> okay. That's why we so try this old school versus new school. They both work. They both We're going to have everyone take a vote at the end. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Because then they won't know how to do the video, and then they won't know how to do it, and then they'll wait. Right? Well, Kathy, I can't possibly pick up the phone because I have to go through my video, but I don't know how to do the video, and then I'm trying to figure it out. All right. Okay. Number one of the things that we would all agree on in the face that I love is leveraging the higher. Okay, so it doesn't make a difference if you're old school or new school. It's an old school technique, though, yeah. It's an old school technique that you've got to leverage the hire. The people that you bring on, where's Mike and Sandy? Oh, hi. Yeah, you went back there, I couldn't see you. So I have the honor of coaching these two great leaders, and we just had the conversation about leveraging the hire. Watch, this is no offense and no brainer. Again, Scott, experienced recruiters know this, that when you hire an agent on your team, or your company, you're going to meet with them and say, by the way, can we sit down and go through the roster of everyone else that worked there and tell me who you think would be a good fit? Or they'll sometimes say, well, this person's unhappy. And they're thinking of moving too. So Scott's shaking and said, yes, 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 because it's, it's just a, it's a natural conversation. You get a lot of points. Now, I would just tell you this, especially if you don't have like a, a really strong revenue or profit sharing system set up in your brokerage, make sure they understand the benefit to them. Of, of bringing them. It, it doesn't have, in most cases, they won't do it for financial reasons. They'll do it because they want to help the person out. So it sounds sure. like this. So, Kathy, you know, obviously you've been at your brokerage for a long time, and, you know, I respect what they've built over there. We don't want to certainly, you know, attack anyone or no. start going after them. And is there anyone there that you think you would make, you'd have the opportunity to make a difference in their life by introducing them to me? Is there anyone in your previous brokerage that you think you could make a difference in their life? by introducing them to me or to us. All I'm asking is for one or two. And by the way, I'm coming from a place of wanting to help them, which makes her look like a hero. And the response every single time is, oh, absolutely. In fact, in most cases, the response is, you know, like the Santa Claus. Here's a list, you know, I'm working on long, I got a whole list for you. And so, I would just meet with you. So just make sure they understand that the 
benefit to them is making a difference in that person's life, not just the financial gain that they might get through the bonuses or profit. Well, also, when I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, actually, I was going to say, in my eyes, I actually see a new school twist to what you're saying. I look at, I thought you were going to say leveraging the hire is making sure that you're doing your promotion correctly when you bring that person out. Oh, that's a good point. You know, so like the people that I mentioned in the last 45 days, we haven't even announced half of them yet. And it's because behind the scenes, Alana's working oh, on videos, so the real media is shooting stuff with them. Like we're doing all of these things because we're gonna announce it and it's gonna be a big splash. And that's important because you really should, every one hire should always bring another hire. It's just like the two to one rule with listing agents. For every listing you take, you should have two transactions. That's excellent. For every agent you bring, uh, producing agent you bring on, you should have another one that follows. Good rule. All right. And the other, the other thing I'll say is when I was, uh, you know, treat myself for all those years, we never had a, a profit share. And I still. And you competed against companies. Oh, that tons of them. It's just because the agents that, I call them my core group. And then the people that you know, would bring on, I, I just talked to them about how, to your point exactly, hey, who else can we help? Yeah. And that was it. Yeah. Awesome. All right, new school. Um, so email blasts. So there's two examples of them. The one that I want you to pay attention to first is the one on the left. So you should take your value proposition. You know, basically, I think we always say, okay, well, you know, what are the five reasons why someone would join you? Or what are the ten reasons why someone would join you? Well, now you have ten different email blasts to use to send out to your market. But now I do pick up the phone. She doesn't like it as much as that she wants me to, but I pick up the phone and what I do is I actually call the people who open our emails but don't click the like request more information. Because if you're using like a MailChimp or a constant contact or stuff like that, every time Alana and Amber on our marketing team will send in a list of everyone who opened it or everyone who maybe clicked the button but didn't actually fill out the form. And so those are people who I know are interested or have piqued their interest, but they didn't actually go to the yes, I want to sit down with you. So I'm just coincidentally calling them with the you know producing agent script, and they think it's amazing. You know, I don't tell them, hey, I've been stalking you actually, and I noticed that you've opened up 87 of our emails. You know, I want to talk to you, but that's actually like my number so one. So what does that call sound like? <laughs> just give us the first couple seconds of that call. Um, I mean, it's different. Like if I'm thinking about Dan, who we hired. It was actually a coincidence he was a co-op. And so I went with the co-op agent script on that one. And sure enough, he actually signed with a different brokerage earlier that day. And I'm like, why didn't you interview us? And he's like, honestly, I didn't think that you serviced my market. And I said, I think it's important that you interview two to three companies before making a decision for your career. Let's sit down for a few minutes. Yeah. And we ended up swiping him from that different company before he started with them. And he came and he joined us. And the guy already has like six or seven pendings. Yeah. And 30 to 5 days. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Next, old school. Okay, old school. Uh, monthly educational events. That's it. Oh, by the way, just to sum up, I should have summed up because I've been summing them up. So the last one, if you're writing down a point, it's identifying each piece of your value proposition and creating an email campaign around each one. So don't send out an entire email or an email with all of your value propositions. Take your value proposition and break it down one by one, in this case Taylor said 10, and now create an email campaign once a week for 10 weeks, once a week for 20 weeks, whatever, around each one of those value propositions. But you have to remember, answer the question, why do they care? I'm on a lot of competitors' emails, and I'm like, yeah, well, I'm not concerned. <laughs> because uh, you're not talking to the consumer. They have no idea why it benefits them to join the organization. So if you notice that one's talking about building your brand, a lot of people think if you join a team, you lose your brain. So call out the problem, like Jeff talks about, and then show how you're the solution. Awesome. All right, Tess, I'm sorry. Congrats. So, uh, monthly educational events, again, those are, they've been around for quite some time. Um, I'll tell you, for mastermind groups, right? So Monthly educational events or mastermind groups? Right, which is huge, or you can do the mastermind group quarterly. <clears throat> you know all about that, because you really came up with that idea, too. But it's, you know, some of it's very traditional um, in the fact that you just get together monthly, you invite people to join you, and it can be a mastermind setting, which these guys have done a great job. Steve's done a great job. Aaron has done a great job. You, uh, one of your educational events, one of the agents you hired came from that. And um, so again, it's the, the key to it, we can take a lot of time. We'll, we'll do more later in our breakout session, because you don't want to spend time on topics and stuff today. But I'll tell you, it's, it's, I used to do towards the end of uh, when I was doing that in the field doing it, 
Um, we did brunch and learns. Brunch and learns, perfect for the North Shore, right, of uh, that area, but it worked. It was Saturday for a couple hours. We had like 10 people, and you know, I didn't have to do any of the work, so I was happy. So uh, some of the clients that we're working with are having success. The key is in the consistency yeah. of doing it. Uh, Alyssa Gamble, are you in here? Where's Alyssa at? Alyssa, you just did your first mastermind. Yes. Yeah. Uh, first of all, stand up and introduce yourself real quick. Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot just because it's fresh in my mind. It's okay. So, Alyssa, you're from? I'm Alyssa Gamble, and I'm from Boise, Idaho, and I run right. a, a really good team. Pretty successful team there, that's right. And um, you just had your first mastermind event. You follow our exact model. In fact, you got you know, the agenda from Taylor of exactly how we promoted it and what you talked about and so forth. And um, uh, Josh, right? You were there too, weren't you, Josh? Yep. Um, you put on your first event. Give us some of your numbers. Very, very first mastermind event. What did it look like? We had 116 RSVP and about 70 show up. Seven and 70 uh, agents in your market showed up. All producers or at least experienced agents. Yep. yep. So we had uh, 1,500 units in the room. 1,500 units in the room. About 800,000 in volume. Or 800, 800 million in volume. 800 million. Sorry, yep. just under a billion. Now. And I know this was only like two weeks ago. What have your results been like so far? What was the response? So I, I have three appointments from it, and then I had about, again, 116 to 70, I had about 50, you know, no-shows, yep. which is typical from agents. Yep. And I've had at least 20 producers reach out and say, I heard how good it was, yep. and uh, make sure you have me on the next one, because yeah. I'll make sure to walk the time. Yeah, so you're gonna add value to these agents' lives. You're going to become known as the developer of people in your market, and a handful of these people, every time after you do one of these, are going to end up joining you. Yes. You feel that? Did you sense that? Yes. Did you guys get that feeling? Did you get that feeling? Yeah. 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 Overwhelmingly positive. Yeah. That's yeah. Awesome. Let's hear it for a lesson. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we're not talking about that. We're doing this instead. 
that we're doing this and doing that, which obviously it benefits everyone in the organization. But number two, you know, I'm thinking about the person, you know, who we just hired who is going to be a really big deal for our organization. It was right after that team meeting they reached out and said, I, I think we need to sit down and talk again about what it looks like. And when they can see your environment, they can see your culture, they can see your training, they can see your leaders, you know, and our team meetings are, you know, two, three hours um, once a month. And so now, you know, it again forces us to be better, but two, you know, after the two, three hours, it's easy at that point, you know, because they get a peek into what it's like to live it every day. But you first have to have a badass sales meeting agenda, mm -hmm. right? Which, I mean, obviously, I think you guys have just that. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right, let's hear it for these two. Nice job.